Hello, and today I'm going to be taking a look at the S&P 500, plus considering the macro environment as we look ahead to the third quarter of 2023. Before I start, please remember that I do these videos just for fun as a hobby and always speak to a qualified financial advisor before making any investment decisions. So first of all, I like to take a bit of a so first of all, I like to take a bit of a long term overview. And going back to the 80s here, we do quite clearly see that there is a general trend for the S&P 500 going up, which just makes sense when you consider how nominal GDP does go up over time as a, as a historical trend. We also see that it does seem to operate on a gradient, but until the great financial crisis of 2008, we used to get these booms and busts. And since then, it seemed to be a lot more settled. Ever since the great financial crisis of 2008, we entered a period of extremely low interest rates. And strangely, the gradient at which the S&P 500 seems to trend upwards has steepened significantly. And you could say that since the Corona crash, a time at which a lot of money was printed with the Fed balance sheet expanding by an extra doubling from about four trillion to eight trillion dollars. Since then, the gradient has arguably steepened even more. But we're kind of expecting this to go more back to normal now that interest rates have risen. Zooming in, we have what I like to call the fang bubble directly after the Corona crisis and the uh, the massive stimulus. And then we seem to have a one year bear market. But then just recently, against a lot of people's expectations, we've got this massive spike up again, which we've called the AI bubble. Of course, when we look at the composition of the S&P 500, we see that the top handful of stocks, and these are, these are the FANG stocks, have absolutely enormous market caps, well out of proportion to the rest of the index. We see here that the top 10% of the S&P 500 is 57% of the total market cap. Because of this, these FANG stocks, which then also are now doubling as AI stocks, are sectors which are skewing the performance of the index, you could say. That's why I'm calling this the AI bubble. So moving on to the macro, and here we see the financial crisis of 2008, how interest rates dropped to virtually nothing and a load of money printing began in the form of quantitative easing. But this, as you can see, was successful in keeping the S&P 500 elevated and also keeping GDP stable. And so we have this new Keynesian economics phenomenon where interest rates and quantitative easing are used for the government to help meet its central bank objectives, which are inflation of 2% and GDP growth of 2% with low unemployment. And what helps the US do this is it has a artificially strong US dollar because it's the world's reserve currency. And there are also other deflationary forces, mainly being globalization and technology. And in fact, we wonder if AI is going to become a new deflationary force, which has helped deflect the inflationary forces, particularly all of the money printing, particularly all of the money printing and government stimuli and low interest rates until recently. So here's the raw data, which I'll go into in a moment, but I like to use my dashboard to just summarize the most important ones where we see that really inflation now is coming back under control. The, I like to package the inflation data into quarterly CPI prints where we see we're currently at 1%, which would only be 4% in a year. And if you take account of the first quarter, we're still only looking at a 5% CPI increase this year. So that's how I get my 4 to 5%. So it's still high, but it certainly is starting to look transitionary. I also wonder if the government would actually find a, something like a 4% inflation quite handy to help if inflate away its massive debt as well. In terms of GDP growth, we're now right on track. In fact, really, that needs to be a green now, I think. 
and unemployment is right on track at it's only three and a half percent. The stock market, the S&P 500 is doing great and house prices are doing great. But that again, I need to update to be in green. So the interest rates, the general understanding is that the Fed probably won't do much more tightening because inflation seems to be coming down. And the extent of the extent to which interest rates have increased, it hasn't blown up the economy yet. And so I've put them as red now because potentially further tightening could start causing more problems, but it seems like they may have pulled it off. Quantitative easing, they're reducing slowly. Inflation now, it's still at 3% year in year, 0.3% CPI on a monthly basis. But really, it does look like the inflation situation is going to be looking quite favourable in a few months. A couple of thoughts here, though, is what if that then turns into a deflation problem? And another thing is, as the economy starts to lift, will that bring oil prices back up and cause inflation again? So it is still slightly problematic, but at least for now, it's looking good. House prices are looking great against all expectations. And GDP growth, we just got the second quarter results out at a very impressive 2.4% real GDP growth. So this recession everyone was talking about just hasn't happened and when I look at the GDP now data which has been good at forecasting uh, what happened in the last quarter it looks even better in fact if anything it's looking too racy but the blue chips have it more at around one percent so GDP is kind of overall looking on track there could be perhaps some signs there that there could be like a inflation could come back again so maybe there'll be some shocks coming ahead in the third and fourth quarters and employment we see is stunningly low and the government debt uh, is now 121 percent of gdp so although it's bad relatively to how it has been in recent years it's not that bad but I've noticed a number of commentators mentioning that the debt is the government debt is now so high that the interest they're having to pay in paying off that debt is starting to become a factor and maybe a bit of a problem. So one thing underpinning all this is the US dollar. And we have this other warning factor that there is a inverted yield curve with the US dollar. And we know it's interesting how actually it's elevated with high interest rates, I guess. It's elevated now, so the cost of the debt is increasing, which hasn't been the case historically. So there's a, a change there. But the fact is we have an inverted yield curve, and that's supposed to mean we're going to go into a recession. Or it could be a harbinger of some serious uh, crisis with the US dollar. Uh, also, in Japan, they've actually been tweaking their yield curve controls. And in fact, the, the Japanese government spends lots of money artificially keeping their yield curve here, how it's supposed to be, not inverted. However, there is some speculation that if that breaks, that could then collapse the uh, situation with the US dollar. When I zoom out and look at the Dixie though in the long term, things do actually look fairly stable when you compare it to historical comparisons. So really overall, the macro situation in the US is starting to look quite good or looking like it will be looking good in a few quarters. I don't really trust the action at the moment, but um, and really my kind of base case, and remember I'm doing this just for fun and don't take this as investment advice, but 
but my kind of base case is we get a bit of an AI bubble, but that will pop. You know, maybe there's a resurgence of inflation in a few quarters, or maybe maybe a recession in the rest of the world drags down the US. But in the end, I do believe we're going to come back to this long-term trend. Yeah, so I'm looking for the S&P 500 to eventually pull out of this uh, bear market. Um, you know, when we're going to 2004, 2005. There is a caveat, which is, uh, like I've said, um, there's the inverted yield curve to think about, and then perhaps a situation in Japan, which could upset everything. But really, my best guess myself is that we will come back down to this long-term trend and, and settle on this long-term trend. What the quick review, there you go. I'm now going to go through all that data in a little bit, in a little bit more detail, some comments. So here's the government debt against GDP. And we see in red there, the government debt is you know, starting to look a bit hefty, but the general trend in relation to GDP is steady. But the thing is, uh, with the increase in interest rates, that means that the debt starts to perhaps become a bit more in danger of coming out of control. This is kind of like a, not really that big a problem at the moment, but it's something that's bubbling over the surface that could become a problem. When we look at GDP versus quarterly CPI inflation, you see how when we had the Corona crisis and then afterwards, it was like, it was like stretching and releasing a rubber band. You know, there's a massive reaction in terms of the GDP, but the inflation takes a lot longer to react. And then there is a kind of uh, equilibration going on in the last few years. And then and we actually did have a bear market, didn't we, in 2021? And as you can see here, um, a negative kind of area there, and then a positive here in uh, 2022. And you do see a kind of equilibration going on. And then when I look here, we could see it, you know, it's, you know, you wonder if it's an equilibration back to the long term general trend. The Fed's famous 2021 box plots, here's what they were projecting would happen. This is what did happen. Uh, but obviously, although they were well off in terms of inflation, it looks like maybe it was transitory but also the speed it coming back down just make me wonder will it overshoot and could we run into a bit of a deflation problem even here's the real gdp box plot that the fed came out with and this is what this is what they predicted predicted what happened and this is what actually did happen uh, but it is actually now looking quite good and unemployment, that's the one thing they got bang on. In fact, the unemployment situation is better than they projected. We see interest rates. And um, going back to here, you see they, they plan on pulling off what they did at the last financial crisis, where they hold interest rates and then let go. But really, given that it seems... In, it's given that it seems they're not really going to have to increase interest rates much more. The situation does actually look fairly contained when you compare it to historic interest rates. Then when we look at inflation, you know, now that it's come down, you know, we didn't actually suffer so badly as was the case in the past. But here we have the quantitative easing. And we see how massive that amount is. And I think it was this huge chunk of cash which led to this kind of ridiculous fang bubble. So here's long-term GDP. But we also see that there is like this trend of GDP always, go, always goes up, which does then kind of support the idea that the S&P will always go up to a certain formula, which is the 
machine of new Keynesian economics. And here we have the GDP now data, which the Atlanta Fed come out with. And here we see that although the blue chips have GDP of being about 1%, the Atlanta Fed see it as being about 4%. So this does make me wonder if you're going to get this AI bubble and then, oh no, inflation's a problem again. And then uh, them having to uh, do something which could then be what sends the uh, sends the S&P 500 back down to its historical baseline. Here's the house price miracle continuing. And look at how low unemployment is. Um, it really is incredible how unemployment is so low these days. So that completes my update for the S&P 500 and the US macro situation. I hope you enjoyed my video. Make sure you speak to a financial advisor before making any investment decisions and good luck with your own investment journey. Please read the disclaimer and remember that prices can go down as well as up.